Do the more. Do the more. Do the more. Do the more. Niggas tryna flex like Mar. Fuck bitches, no X like Mar. Pull up and yeah, a little more. No, for real. <laughs> that way. Yeah, welcome back to the YouTube video, guys. And today. I'm going to be talking about how I got my trays taken or my food taken while I was in prison. Now, you guys listened to my first day out song where I was like, Smoke took all my trays. He was a crip. This was like the second bar or the second line in the song. So you guys already know. But uh, today I'm going to be telling you guys the full story. So <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Now, luckily, this only lasted two days because it was my uh, first roommate. And luckily, like he had got shipped off to the to the next prison uh two days after i got there so i didn't have to put up with it much but um well, let, let's just go ahead and get started all right so when i uh first got to, to kirkland when they when they first moved me to my cell like uh you know they they just put you in a cell and then the cell walks away it's not like you know they're not gonna make sure that you don't have no problems with your roommate or nothing like that you know you could just you could die the, the first second you walk in a cell and ain't nobody gonna do nothing about it but so let, let's let's just go ahead and get started so when they moved me to the cell um basically there was this guy in their name so he go he went by the name of smoke and actually he was a juvenile now uh you guys remember i i, you, I was in the youthful offenders program so everybody there was between 17 and uh 25 but um this guy this was like his first prison bid because i think he was either i think he was 18 but like prior to be like when they took him to prison like at first he was in djj the department of juvenile justice so this was his like he had never even been to like a real jail for adults like this was his first time being in prison so basically he was just trying to act hard because like i said he was a crip and you know the, he, he's just i mean people like that are just going to right back in prison like i'm gonna just keep it real but um when i got there uh he wasn't friendly at all uh i, I guess he did, he was wondering about my tattoos as well but basically when i first walked in there he was like um he was basically trying to intimidate me because he was like oh do you bang well i mean everybody gets asked when they first get to prison that's the first thing they're gonna ask you is if you bang so of course i said no to that because i'm not in any type of gang and then he was like oh okay he was like well i don't like roommates and i'm just like yeah i was just trying to play it cool i was like well, yeah, I thought I thought it because of COVID, we'd be in single cells, even though it wasn't not like that at all. There's three people in every cell. I already knew that, but I was just trying to play it cool. And then he started getting more aggressive. He's like, "Well, you know, usually what we do when we get to prison is we like to shoot around." And I'm like, "I was, I, I, I you, you guys already know. Just like I said in my last story, I, I'm not with all that fighting shit." So I straight up told him, "I was like, man, I, honestly, I'm not with all that fighting shit. I'm just trying to do my time and go home." So he found this as an opportunity to take advantage of me. Now he kept trying to like, still like, like he had like slapped me a little bit. Like he was trying to like, just, you know, just to see if I did anything about it. Of course I didn't do anything. Cause I'm, I'm not about to get my ass beat. I, I, I already know I don't know how to fight. So I wasn't about to get my ass beat just so that he can gain some respect from his crew. Cause he even told me too, like he was telling me, uh, uh, where all the crypt what like what cells all the crypts were at and he was showing me what blood what cells the bloods were at he was like you sure you don't bang man because all the bloods are over there and i'm a crips so all the, we got all the crypts over here so so he you know he was just still trying to fight me and i just kept on telling him man i you know what i'm saying i, I, ain't, I ain't about to fight you i ain't with all that fighting shit so then like i said he found that as an opportunity to take advantage of me so he was like well, what's up with it now so when when i first got there of course they gave me a tray because i got there like in the evening that's when i finally like you know got processed and all that so they sent me to, to the uh cell with my dinner tray so um i still had my um I, I hadn't touched it at all so he was like well what's up with that cake on your tray now uh we we did get blueberry cake every night on our on our trays so um at first, I, you know, I was like, man, I, I you know, I, I like blueberries. <laughs> I was like, I was like, man, I, I like, I ain't gonna lie, I like, I like blueberries. I think I'm gonna eat that cake. And he was like, you know, you know what I'm saying? I, I need that cake. And I was, you know, I was, and then he was like, well, we gonna shoot the round over that cake. Then and I was like, you know what? You can have it. I, I ain't about to fight over no. I ain't about to die in here over no prison food. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I ain't said out loud, but I just, I just told him, man, you go ahead and you can have it. And then he he turned into an everyday thing though, and not just an everyday thing, an every trade thing. So basically, he was like, "Yeah, you know what? I, you know I'm I'm gonna protect you in here. You know you ain't in no gang. So you know all the crips, we gonna look out for you. You just give me a little something off your tray every time, and I got you. And ain't you gonna be straight in here? So I was like, "All right, man. Even though I knew I didn't need protection, the only person I needed protection from was him, because nobody else. Like it was 24 hour lockdown. It's not like we came out together." everybody else you know what i'm saying they weren't gonna mess with me we they in different cells 
But, you know, like I said, he found that as an opportunity to take advantage of me. So even when Nick came to the cell, which was just the same day, just like uh, 30 minutes after I came in, that's when Nick came in. And, you know, he couldn't do anything about it either. He didn't like what was going on, but, you know what I'm saying? And then when Smoke left, of course, Nick didn't do that to me because he's not that type of person. But, um, so, yeah, he, like, basically, after that, every tray, like, lunch, breakfast, and dinner, um, he, I mean, I, I still got to eat, like, a meal, but he would take, like, the bread. Like, sometimes we would get two pieces of bread, or sometimes we'd get cornbread, or sometimes we'd get that blueberry cake. Basically, he just took those desserts or, like, that extra stuff, like, bread, and the cake and the cornbread that's all he really took he didn't like take like none of the actual meal like i still like they're not gonna starve you know what i'm saying like nobody in prison is is cold-hearted enough to starve somebody they're you know what i'm saying even if even if you get a roommate who likes to who, you know is like a bully and wants to take your tray they're not gonna take the whole tray they're, they're gonna let you eat they're just gonna take like the cake or the dessert or whatever so um but he did that for breakfast lunch and dinner now breakfast was a nightmare because I don't even eat scrambled eggs and I don't eat grits. And remember I told you guys, all we get for breakfast is eggs, uh, bread and grits. So, um, like I said, this only lasted two days though. Like I got there in the evening, uh, I got there on a Tuesday night. So I dealt with it one night and then the next day, Wednesday for three times that day. And then Thursday, and then he left Friday in the morning before lunch race came. So just like two, you know, two days basically. But see, here's a here's another funny part. Like I actually got really tired of it that Thursday, and I was thinking to myself, like, damn, maybe if I stand, like, I was like, like that Wednesday, I was already irritated the whole day, and then that Thursday, like in the morning, I woke up and I'm like, damn, man, maybe if I stand up for myself, he'll st maybe he just wants me to stand up for myself. Like I already had an idea that he was leaving too, so at the same time, I was trying to just kind of deal with it until he left. But at the same time, I was like, damn, maybe if I stand up for myself maybe that's what he wants me to do so and i see i told him i like these hot like I, I love hot dogs so i told him that now we had got a hot dog tray on thursday for dinner so um when that tray came um when it came to the door like i like see usually i just stayed in bed and let him grab the trays and he would take everything off of it and then hand me the tray after he got his bread or whatever but when that tray came i had grabbed mine and I tried to like, I was like, ooh, hot dogs, mm, yum, yum. Now I, I grabbed a piece of bread and I was gonna hand him my bread because I, you know, I wasn't about to play fuck about that. But you know what I'm saying? He didn't want me to even do that. He was like, whoa, 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 what, what you doing? So he like, you know, grabbed the tray and I'm like trying to hold on to it. I'm pulling it back and he's like, whoa, what you, why are you trying to hand me, bro? And I, but I like, I see, I was like, I said, I was just gonna hand him one piece of bread and then I was gonna eat uh, like both of my hot dogs. But that wasn't his intention. He was gonna grab one of the hot dogs and just give me the the uh just, just just give me one hot hot dog so um so you know he, he was real mad about that so i um basically what happened is he ended up taking both hot dogs off my tray so all i had was like the 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 um the two sides which were like cabbage and corn or something like that it, it was some vegetables it wasn't even no food and i was like damn man you've been doing me dirty and so he got real mad about that he was like what the fuck have i been doing you dirty and so I just got back in bed, ate my vegetables like a little bitch. I ain't even gonna lie. I was acting like a little bitch, but that he was so close to beating my ass because of that day, man. I almost got real fucked up just for standing up for myself. Like, I don't even know why I thought that was a good idea. Like, it was my last night there, like, or I mean, his last night there. I should have just put up with it until he left in the morning, but because he was really ready to beat my ass. But even after he did that, he did give me the one hot dog back. Like, he was like, man, don't do that shit no more. But he did give me the hot dog. So, like I said, now ain't nobody going to starve you in prison. Like, But, I mean, I feel like I handled it the right way. I'm not about that life. Of course, like, if you are about that, I mean, if you are about that life, I mean, even if you're not about that life, you're supposed to fight and defend yourself when someone tries to take your food in prison. But, you know, I just wasn't on that type of time. I'm not about to die in prison over prison food. You know what I'm saying? So, I just... I just dealt with it, but it was like a blessing that it only lasted two days and I didn't have to put up with that my whole bid because I definitely would have survived. I, I eventually would have told a CO and got moved to a different cell or something like that. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have just put up with that my whole like the whole four months I was there. But I just like I said, I knew that he was leaving. I knew that he was leaving real soon, so I just put up with it. But uh like I said, he he left that early in that morning and he basically told me like he like it was crazy because like 
even like with him taking like some food off my trays, like he was like acting like we were cool the whole time. Like he would be like in there rapping and I'm like, oh yeah. And like, you know, I'd be telling him stories and shit like that. Like we would, like everything was just normal. It was just like, you know, he was just taking advantage of me. It's kind of, it's kind of fucked up. But I mean, like he, he, he told me himself, he was like, it's prison, man. It's your, that's your fault. You shouldn't have came here. I'm like, yeah, you're right. That's what he said with that, that day when I tried to stand up for myself. He was like, it's pretty because because I told him he's doing me dirty and he, he knew he was but you know it is what it is but um but yeah when he left that morning he told me and Nick man y'all y'all better stick together because y'all ain't gonna last in here and <laughs> he was right about that I, I it's crazy how me and Nick wasn't able to stay together our whole four months but it all worked out but <laughs> I think that's about it for this story I really hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, I, I, I ain't, I, I, I'm keeping it all real with you guys in these stories. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to, like, out here act like no image. Like, I was in there acting tough or not like that. It, like, I wasn't. And I'm just keeping it 100 with you guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to click the subscribe button down below. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at the real Omar. Follow me on Snapchat, WillLilMar. And, yeah. No, for real, that way, yeah.